Good morning, friends. It's great to be with you this Wednesday morning. And if you're in the Amarillo area or the upper panhandle, we're just so thankful for the rain God has given us this morning. And as we're diving in this morning, I want to encourage you, we're going to be in Acts chapter 18. And if you're with us on Facebook and you have any prayer requests this morning, I would encourage you to tap those in to the comment section there. And when you see a prayer request come across, be sure to reply, let folks know that we're praying for them. And if you've just joined us on Facebook, I want to encourage you to follow Trinity Fellowship Church. That way you'll get the alerts and be aware when we're going live on Biblecast every Monday through Thursday, as well as the other events that we have throughout the week. If you're with us on any of the podcast or the YouTube version, we're glad you're with us. You can always email your prayer request at Biblecast at tfc.org. All right, we're continuing in Paul's second missionary journey here as he's going through. And remember, he just uh, shook off the dust of his sandals because the Jews had rejected him. The Jewish people had rejected him there. And we're going to see just some of them. Many of the others continued to follow and follow in his ways. But we're seeing how Paul is boldly preaching the gospel everywhere he goes. So let's now join in in Acts chapter 18, verse 7. It says, Leaving the synagogue, Paul went to the home of Titus, a convert to Judaism, for he and his family attended the Jewish meetings and they had all become believers in Jesus. So we see that there were many Jewish individuals, including Titus here and his whole family, who began to follow Jesus. They believed the message that Paul had delivered. And we know that Titus becomes basically a spiritual son of Paul's in his later ministry journey. So we see here the beginning of kind of a mentoring that's going to happen in Titus's life. We have Crispus, the leader of the synagogue, believed in the Lord together with his entire family, and many of the Corinthians who heard what had happened believed in the Lord and were baptized. One night, the Lord spoke to Paul in a supernatural vision and said, Don't ever be afraid. Speak the words that I give you and don't be intimidated because I am with you. No one will be able to hurt you for there are many in this city whom I call my own. For the next year and a half, Paul stayed in Corinth faithfully teaching the word of God. And I love that we get to see kind of just this moment, this interaction between Paul and the Lord. And I really believe this is an encouragement for all of us. You know, there are times that are coming in our current season, in our culture, just where we are, where we're going to have the opportunity to stand for our faith. You know, I was recently watching how some of the baseball players re 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 refused to wear the gay pride flags, little badges on their uniform, and they removed them. They were very gracious. They were very honoring in that they said, we love all people. We're not rejecting individuals, but we are saying that because of Jesus, and they literally use the name of Jesus, because of Jesus, we're going to stand for our faith. And I want to encourage us. This is just something that's going to be happening in our culture. And like Paul, we have to recognize what Jesus told all of his disciples, which is this, when you're dragged before leaders, don't worry about what you're going to say because I will put my words in your mouth through the Holy Spirit. So we can all have the same boldness that Paul had. We can all walk without intimidation, loving, kind, encouraging to those around us, not ever being hateful, but <clears throat> recognizing that Jesus is with us everywhere that we go. It says, Now at that time, Galileo was the regional governor who ruled over the Roman province of Acacia. And the Jews turned against Paul and came together to seize him and bring him publicly before the governor's court. They accused him before Galileo, saying, This man is creating a disturbance by persuading people to worship God in ways that are contrary to our laws. Now, again, wouldn't it be nice to know that God's with you when you're in this moment? So Paul has now literally been dragged into court. He's been dragged into court over his beliefs. But look how the Lord defends. Just as Paul was about to speak in his defense, Galileo interrupted and said, Wait, if this involves some major crime or fraud, it would be my responsibility to hear the case. But this is nothing more than a disagreement among yourselves over semantics and personalities and traditions of your own Jewish laws. Go and settle it yourselves. I refuse to be the judge on these issues. So Galileo dismissed them from the court. Immediately the crowd turned on Solithians, one of the leaders of the synagogue who sided with Paul. They seized him and beat him up right there in the courtroom. Now, this is incredible. This, I mean, this is just like something that you might see on a, on, a, on a movie or a TV show. So right there in the courtroom, they began to attack this man who stood with Paul and who stood with him on his beliefs about Christianity. I mean, it's just almost unbelievable to see what's happening here. But Galileo showed no concern at all over what was happening. 
After remaining in Corinth several more days, Paul finally bid them shalom, or finally bid shalom to all the believers and sailed away for the coast of Syria, accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila, who we saw yesterday were part of the ones that Paul lived with. They were tent makers together, but they were also in ministry together. They were doing this thing together, supporting one another and serving one another. Real sweet relationship between those three. But I also think it's also interesting here, he bids shalom. And this is just a time for a little introduction of that word. We don't see that so too often. It says bid them peace, but the word shalom in the Hebrew and the, the way a, a Jewish person would share it is much deeper than peace. You know, a lot of times for us, peace simply means the absence of conflict. But for the Jewish believer, for the, for the Hebrew, the word shalom means perfect and total contentment. It means peace that brings contentment in all things and in all ways. And so that's what he's wishing on them as he leaves. Before they left, Paul had his head shaved at Concheria because he had taken a vow of dedication. Now this is kind of interesting. You can look into commentaries. We don't know for sure exactly what vow he had possibly taken, but it is interesting that he is continuing to follow the Jewish traditions. So even when, just like we saw yesterday, he's a little bit frustrated with some of the Jewish individuals refusing to accept the gospel, refusing to accept the truth that Jesus was the Messiah, he still continued to follow the Jewish traditions. He lived a life of following those traditions. Why? So that he could be a witness and an example to the Jewish people. So Paul never abandoned his Jewishness. He never abandoned uh, his Jewish nature. He simply continued to follow in that way, though he was reaching mostly to Gentiles from this point forward. When they reached Ephesus, Paul left Priscilla and Aquila behind. Then he went into the synagogue and spoke to the Jews. Again, as he always does, to the Jew first. When they asked him to stay, they asked him to stay longer, but he refused and said farewell to them, adding, I will come back to you, if it is God's will, after I go to Jerusalem to observe the feast. Then he set sail from Ephesus to Caesarea. When he arrived there, he traveled on to Jerusalem to visit the church and pray for them. Then he left for Antioch. After spending more time there, Paul continued on through the region of Galatia and Pergoia in the central Turkey. And wherever he went, he encouraged and strengthened the believers. And so we see Paul's boldness as he travels through, as he's preaching the gospel, as he's being filled with the Holy Spirit, as he's engaging with his friends along the way. You know, and it's an example for how to live our lives. It's an example of the way God has called each one of us to be witnesses, to be salt and light into the earth. You know, we live in such a unique time. And I really do believe, just like Esther, we were created for such a time as this. I believe you are here because there is a specific need in your area of influence for the light of God to be shown. And so my prayer for us this morning is that we would be bold, that we would be filled with His Spirit, that we would be courageous, just like Paul was courageous, so that we might reach those for the love of Jesus, because He is so worth it. So Holy Spirit, that's our prayer this morning. We ask that you would come and fill us. Even as rain is falling on this land and we're so thankful for it, we ask for your spirit to fill our hearts. We ask for any hard places, any place where we are dry this morning, for you to soften us and let your very presence settle down inside of us. And God, we ask that you would empower us to be exactly who you have called us to be, that we would be salt and we would be light, that we would be those who bring <clears throat> glory to your name, and help other people experience your love. God, we want to be those who stand for your truth, who stand for righteousness, but we do so with the love and grace and compassion that so motivated Jesus when he was here on the earth, and I know still motivates him today. So Holy Spirit, come, fill us. Let us be carriers of your goodness everywhere we go today. And I just release a special blessing. I just feel like there's some, some healings that need to be released this morning. So I just release those healings right now in Jesus' name. Let those eyes be opened. Let the ears be opened. And let all of that pain be gone right now in Jesus' name. Well, we love you guys. It's great to be with you. We love you. We love you. Have an amazing day. God bless.